Κυρίε και κύριοι, συνεχίζουμε τη σειρά των βίντεο, των ενημερωτικών βίντεο για την ημικρανία με τον καθηγητή Άλαν Ράπαπορτ από, από το Πανεπιστήμιο του UCLA στην Καλιφόρνια, πρώην πρόεδρο τη Διεθνού Εταιρεία Κεφαλαλγία και καταξιωμένο ερευνητή με φοβερό ερευνητικό έργο τη κεφαλαλγία και στην ημικρανία. So, Dr. Ράπαπορτ, we previously talked about migraine and the diagnosis and our two next questions from the audience that I would like to speak in this short video is number one. Recently, in the past few years, many people get their diagnosis of vestibular migraine. And it's been very common nowadays that a, people, that a person with a dizziness um, would get this diagnosis or possible diagnosis. So, would you mind sharing with us who might be a person with a vestibular migraine? And let's say it in other words, What are the symptoms that are not vestibular migraine, but can be just dizziness or another diagnosis? So this is a very controversial area in our field and headache specialists argue all the time about what is vestibular migraine. Is there a term vestibular migraine? And interestingly, in our international uh, diagnostic manual that we all use, Uh, there's no term vestibular migraine right now. Maybe it's going to come. So I will tell you what I think vestibular migraine is, and it has something to do with what the literature agrees on. But somebody might say, no, no, I think it's different. So first of all, you have to have migraine. So we diagnose migraine in a certain way, and at the beginning of the video, we talked about some of the symptoms you need so for migraine. So you need a definite diagnosis of migraine? Yes, you need a diagnosis of migraine because if somebody has dizziness or they feel like they're going to faint or they have vertigo where the room is spinning and they have to hold on to something, they may not have migraine. But if they have those symptoms and they have migraine, you might say they could have vestibular migraine. Now, those symptoms can occur during a migraine attack where they have very severe pain and they're nauseated and lights bothering them and they're disabled and they have to lie down and they're dizzy or the room is spinning or it could happen without a migraine attack. And that's what always confused me years ago before I understood more about it. People would come in and say, I get these attacks where I can't walk straight and I'm dizzy and I feel like I'm gonna fall, I feel like I'm going to pass out, the room is spinning around me or I'm spinning in the room and I don't have a headache. But then I take the history and I find out that they do get headaches, they do have migraine and so it could very well be that they have what you're calling vestibular migraine. Migraine with some of these vestibular kind of symptoms. Why do they get that? We don't know exactly, just like we don't know exactly why people get migraine. We know it's a disease of the brain. It also uh, involves nerves that are just outside the brain that go to the face. The trigeminal nerve is one that's very important in migraine. But we don't really know, is it just because of inflammation in certain areas of the brain? Is it because the blood vessels aren't acting quite normally? Or is it something totally different? We, don't, we know a lot about migraine. It's been investigated very carefully. But if somebody asks me, well, what causes migraine? I don't really know. It's a combination of many things. And where does migraine start in the brain? We think we know one or two areas, but we're not even sure about that. But getting back to vestibular migraine, that's what it is in my opinion. It's migraine with these unusual symptoms that there's something wrong with your balance. You're, you have vertigo, which is the sensation of spinning, dizziness, or the feeling like you're going to fall or pass out. I have two questions now on this for you. Question number one, how long can the symptoms of dizziness, for example, in vestibular migraine last? 
scandal lasts for months or they have to be more short-lived, like the migraine symptoms we all know, like one day, two days. I'm not sure of the answer, but I think it's more the latter. My, uh, the vestibular symptoms should be hours or a few days, not permanent for a long period of time. That's usually something else. Sometimes you can find out the cause, Sometimes you can't, so it's usually shorter. And my final question on this, some people might have symptoms that could be related to what we call vestibular migraine, but not have any sign of migraine themselves. Still, their mother can have migraines. So if there is a family history of migraine, but the person never experienced anything that could be classified as migraine, could this person have vestibular migraine, in your opinion? That's an interesting question. I would say probably not. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible if there's a strong family history of migraine, but it's hard to diagnose vestibular migraine without having migraine. So in my opinion, you'd have to have migraine. There's something maybe we shouldn't get into visual aura, but some people will have the aura and never have pain. migraine pain in their whole life. As a matter of fact, it happens over the age of about 50, maybe a little more to women than men, but it happens in men also. And people have a visual aberration that lasts between five minutes and usually 30 minutes, but it shouldn't go longer than an hour where they might have trouble seeing on half their vision, they might see flashes of light, they might have small blind spots in certain areas, they might see something that appears way too far away or too close or too big or too small, something strange happening to their vision. And most of the time, if they have migraine, the migraine pain comes towards the end of that or follows it fairly quickly. But there are some people, even if they had migraine when they were younger, migraine stops in a lot of people and they get this visual aura anyway without the pain. And I see many people that are worried that they have migraine or something else wrong with the brain and it's simply an aura that doesn't belong to migraine. What causes that? Some sort of hyperexcitability in the brain, but we don't know the cause. Okay, so that was the second thing I wanted to discuss, migraine aura. So thank you for bringing this into the conversation. So thank you for this, and we continue shortly in the next video about migraine. Okay.